we got into a pinch. I clawed, uh, there was a mission sort of stranded around Duna, so I sent the claw out to give it some fuel. And then it turns out that I don't have resource transfers unlocked because that requires a R&D building upgrade which costs 3.36 million. Uh, probably I'm running at 200% cost. Three point. I know I don't want everybody in here. Hold on. In went in. Oh, uh, I don't know. That's gonna be a problem because they updated the version of Unity between 1.7 1.8, 1 and far as I can tell, that changed a lot of things. So a lot of plugins have a lot of work to do, basically. I don't know if everybody's up to that. No, yeah, I mean, they w want to upgrade it, but... Don't, th don't think it'll be particularly easy. Okay, so, one Kerbal Around the Moon... ...called Jankot, and one Kerbal Around Mimis called Lisa. Moon first. Angle looks worried. Well, I decided to finally get the Dubai map on during the DCS sale. I haven't tried. I haven't got a chance to try it. Yeah, well, it's got all the nice buildings and all that business. Yeah, probably the most scenic. And since I suck at combat, I probably should just look good flying around. <laughs> Red flag campaigns, yeah. I mean, the other maps have like all the all the campaigns and all, but since I'll just die five seconds in, <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of time. Honestly, more time than Kerbal, so even given prior flight sim experience. Making carrier landings? No, carrier landings I can deal with. Not getting myself killed from enemies and actually ki killing enemies is a little bit harder for me. DCS and War Thunder are completely different things. Aerial refueling is very difficult, yeah. Yeah. Carrier landings are easier than aerial refueling. I. Maybe even combat is easier than aerial refueling. Yeah, oh god, no. <laughs> you haven't tried it, have you? Have you tried atmospheric docking, you ace? I did recently. That did not go well. And I was in stock, and it didn't go well. I know, I know, I still find hardly aerial refueling happens. Really. Can you imagine the SR-71 trying to do aerial refueling? Like, on the edge of stalling? I mean, what the heck? 8N1 <laughs> rockets to lift a Saturn V and see the performance. <laughs> I'd rather use my... Uh, my new Kasei rocket, which is better than an N1 in every respect. Rocket profiles? Yeah, I sort of ran out of rockets with that. Vader Nick, you, you need to give me that purple rocket to do a rocket profile on or something. Like, he's too busy updating everything to every new version of KSP that comes out every five seconds. Done well and is plausible. And even do what if? Yeah, but there's certain what ifs that. Uh, no. The problem with what ifs in history is everybody has an agenda. You can tell what the agenda is by what particular thing was they're cleverly leaving out and ignoring, and it just stinks to high heaven. We're not going the wrong. Okay, we're going the way around. Ah. Uh, I still don't use that gizmo down there. 
Okay, uh, that should be good enough for now. Hmm, not the most ideal situation. Whatever, we'll make orbit first. Roman influence in Britain was a complicated thing. <laughs> so, let me put it that way. The Roman administration of Britain was, uh... Sort of a mess. Hangle is a pilot, yes. We put him on here to get more experience. 40 BC? No, he died in 44. And if my recollection is correct, he crossed the Rubicon in 49. 55. So, I mean, Pompey was in control of the Senate until Julius Caesar crosses the Rubicon, obviously, so... Or maybe it, maybe it was the decisive battle in 49. Okay. Sorry, we're doing little whiffer duels here. But we should have enough fuel to handle this. Boudica, yeah. That there's various spellings of her name, so I don't think there's any uh yeah. It's fine. I've seen a whole bunch of different ways of spelling her name. And I don't know about wanting the Britons in. Again, uh, here we've got a problem where our sources are the Romans. A lot too. No, at that time, yeah, they all did. There's like a dozen ways of spelling Henry, for instance. But, um, the dictionary was developed after Shakespeare's time. But Shakespeare himself was responsible for, like, codifying a whole lot of spelling. I mean, I shouldn't say himself, uh, the people who actually wrote down the stupid plays more accurately. But, yeah. Samuel Johnson and the dictionary were later. That doesn't cover names necessarily, but sort of by extension. Basically, everybody who was alive at the time has been accused of being Shakespeare <laughs> at some point or another. Yeah, the, the, the hy hypothetical like uh, affairs of Shakespeare, which is like basically fan Sh Shakespeare life fan fiction kind of stuff. Okay, on to Minmus. And it so happens that the trysts always happen with the famous people of their time, like they all like were in the same club or something. I don't, I don't think so, and you know, I'm I'm I don't play stock very expertly. There are others who are more expert at it than I am. I mean, the people who do the Kraken tech and all that business. It's way beyond me. Lisa's pod. We're gonna rescue Lisa Kerman. Okay, that'll be fine, probably. So we have to get money to unlock the R&D building so that we can transfer fuel because we've got a a claw clawed onto a vehicle that's stranded around Duna and it's waiting to transfer the fuel into that vehicle with Rich Ackerman stranded around Duna but it can't because we never unlocked resource transfer and we don't have the money right now. That is the situation. Short for BV, even though we call it W. Interchangeable. But not in English. Exactly, Miko, exactly. <laughs> that's that's not polite, Thylord Root. 
like to the French. Well, it's not to the French. They're talking about their own alphabet. You can't be throwing an FU in the middle of the alphabet, for heaven's sake. So, well, you gotta tell the kids. <laughs> Something you might say about most events in history. It's true. One alphabet. Not even... T well, well, it's not... First of all, the syllabaries, but uh, there's only two that could be considered alphabets. Kanji is definitely not an alphabet. It's it's just a bunch of random characters that are sort of unsorted and completely thrown about all over the place. There, there are study guides, you know, they, they have the grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 kanji and all that business, but it's not, it's completely arbitrary. There's like no order to them. And each one of them has different ways of pronouncing it. That's the most annoying thing. At least in Chinese, as far as I could tell, they have one way of pronouncing each each one of those characters. But... In Japanese, there's like half a dozen ways of pronouncing any given one. What, are you, what do you mean? Chinese? Well, I mean, the different... Different dialects, Chinese will have a different way of pronouncing each character, but each dialect will have one way of pronouncing that character, I think, at, the, at least in my experience. So Cantonese, you know, if you see a character, you know how to pronounce it. In Japanese, you see a character, you have to know what the word is in order to pronounce it, still. Because just seeing the character, you don't know which pronunciation is the right one for that situation. Well, you don't need to tell the guy who was born in Hong Kong that, that would root. <laughs> oh, Japanese. You could have been so simple. <laughs> you don't actually even know, I mean, uh, there are a lot of common names, so you know how to pronounce those, but when you see a person's name written down, you don't necessarily know how to pronounce their name. I don't know about what the Mongols used for writing. Yeah, yeah, it would be easy if only... Basically, it'd be like Korean at that point. I should learn Korean. They have the right idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a very smooth script, yeah. Not quite as curly as Japanese hiragana, but... It's square-ish. There's some there's some loops. There's some loops involved. There there's there's straight lines and loops. Now now don't uh, it, it looks it looks fancy. You don't have to go to insulting people saying as if you're drunk or high or anything. All right, Lisa Kerman, another scientist. I can tell my enthusiasm. We need to uh, get one of those mobile processing labs, but there's no point now. We need money. Career settings? Um, hard, basically. Um, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, I can see. Um, no reverting, no quick loading, no missing crews respawn, no auto hire. Indestructible facilities? Yes. Uh, allow other launch sites? Yes. Enable comms network? Yes. 60, 60, 60 on rewards, 200, 200 on penalties. And, um, Kerbals level up immediately, allow negative funds or science, power pressure limits, yes, g-force limits, yes, uh, resource transfer, obeys cross-field rules, yes, uh, power ups, grades, yes, require signal for control, yes, plasma blackout, yes, and enable extra ground stations. 20 cats and 4 dogs? Oh my. <laughs> that's not, that's not a house that is a pet shop <laughs> i don't um it just says it a base uh so it, it probably can't transfer fuel through a heat shield basically there are certain things you can't transfer fuel through okay time to go back all the best to your new neighbor trying to fix that up there's, there's taking control, and then there's having enough stamina. <laughs> well, we once again have some spare fuel, so we can take the liberty of slowing down a bit. And I mainly had Hangul come along for this part, so that Hangul could pull retrograde instead of... 
any randomness in our trajectory. Now it's all about whether we've got mountains. Well, there's... Maybe well, we should pass over those, so I don't think there's any gonna be a mountain problem. Oh, we might land in the mountains. Please pass over the mount pass over the mountains. Okay, so we brought Jankot and Lisa back. We will get some money, but not enough money. Xperia is ugly. It's I don't know. I don't know anything about phone aesthetics. <laughs> Explore the sun mission? Well, I don't know. I don't think it pays that much. To dock two vessels on... On? <laughs> dock two vessels on or around the sun? Rendezvous two vessels in order. That sounds too icky to me. Uh, that's not. It's not my idea of a fun time. Finally, to give us a Dres mission, I'll pick that up just on principle. Mm. Re recover Gwynbald and Grinbald's craft from orbit of Duna. I mean, we could pick up the advance and then, like. Ooh! Okay. This is good. I need money. They'll give us this advance for the Sentinel Infrared Telescope. It's a deal. Alright, that, that'll that take care of it. So, we can unlock this, finally. And with that... We're, we're not doing Parker Solar Probe, we're doing the Sentinel Telescope, whatever that's the equivalent of. Um... And then we can get back to the muffin. Okay, so what we wanted was transfer fuel. Oh no! Do we have to like... Do we have to send another one? I mean, does, does the fuel transfer not work? You just need to let the Sentinel Telescope just sit around. So like, if I unlock fuel, tr fuel transfer, it only works if... If what exactly? If it's a new, new craft, it doesn't work if it's an old craft? Well... I might have to do this the hard way. I technically didn't need to. Redocking? No, I mean... the. the, the uh, well, that's a hard way. I'm just gonna use this engine. I think... I think I can manage it such that... Such that uh, we can just use this engine to push the pod out. We'll lock the fuel yaz in there. Alright. Fine, we'll try and undock and redock, but I doubt it. Because it's not even allowing us to transfer fuel between things. Oh, it does allow that. What What if the... Are, are we sure that the clock allows fuel transfer these days? What if it doesn't? Okay, we've, we've released... Let me just sort of get flat to our... No, that's stock now. One of the newer features. Not really new, but newer. Oh god, I, uh, oh well, it worked. Hmm... I still can't transfer fuel. But maybe it's because I was controlling from... Hold on, let me control from here. And lock this stuff. And I just want to use this guy. It's still saying 78. Apparently, somebody had asked what this does. I believe it does bad things. We are going to disable it. 
Is that the reason why I can't do this? Because it is. So forget that nonsense. <laughs> we are changing the rules. We're mildly less difficult about these things. I hope nobody has a problem with that. Okay, uh, we'll leave it with a little bit of... Well, it's got the RCS anyway. Okay, this remains a commsat in orbit. You always keep that... It seems like it's a bad rule. I do not like this rule. Okay. So... This should now have enough fuel. Yeah, definitely. 1,600. And... Activate that again. Alright, so we have to wait for the transfer window back. And that's gonna be a while. But I wanna get Rich Hat back finally, because he's bringing back blueberries. And this is a very important thing that we must get done with today. And I don't care if I have to time warp years and years. We had picked up another sort of... Well, we had the Dreads contract. We'll we'll plot what to do with the Sentinel Telescope. Maybe the Sentinel, Sentinel Telescope will be next. Well, I don't know. The Dreads mission window might be first. Let's see. Hmm. And we've got to do two surface outposts, too. Yes, it was called Muffin because of the blueberries. That's right. The Drez transfer window is when Drez is at 82 degrees. I believe. If I'm that's just the top of my head. That looks less than 82, but it might be about right. They don't hey, if they're not gonna pay me to go to Jewel, I'm not going to Jewel, okay? Things cost a lot around here. People thought I was hoarding cash, but then poof, I need 3.36 million on the on the spot right there. I like the cheetah, because whenever you slap it on, you get 4,000 meters per second magically. I get the feeling that this is a... I mean, making a rocket continually taller is not the best thing in stock Kerbal, even though, you know, in real life they can go like this. So... Going with the vacuum, that should be enough to get there and make orbit and everything. Dres probe. This has a sort of Soviet ICBM feel to it on the bottom end. They haven't bothered to give us new textures for the fins or anything, you'd think those would be easy. Okay, let's go. Trez is a bit further out. I hope the antenna is alright. Mass isn't a big deal. Cost is more of a deal. I guess when stock, the tanks are pretty darn expensive compared to Realism Overhaul. In Realism Overhaul, it's all about the engines, so if you use three stages, you got more engines. But. It is sort of three stages, because the, the probe itself has a substantial amount of Delta V. I've got more Delta V than I need, hopefully, probably. So, yeah. I don't know, it's been a long time since I visited Drez. Anyway, here we go. Could have used a little bit more electric charge, but... I'm going too fast. I'm not. I mean, I'm turning too fast. Ooh. Good thing I have fins. Hold on there. Hold on there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, you know, keeping it below a certain mass is a big deal right now. But this is the cost at the end of the day. And these Bobcat engines and the Cheetah engine are just really good. Yeah, the clamshell fairings seem to be quite disastrous, yeah. It's pretty obvious that they didn't really want to do clamshell fairings and... But people wanted clamshell fairings, so they gave them clamshell fairings, but they didn't give it to them 
best way possible. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's more of an afterthought. Lots of ejection force, yeah, but you know. Eventually, you're gonna get messed up with that, forgetting to do that or something. Okay, well, we'll do a mid course adjustment. I sort of expected that. Okay, and that's 900 there, but we have enough. That's why I packed extra. Heck, this thing could go on to Jewel afterwards, probably. I didn't get that fill panel out? Jeez. Gross negligence. The Iron Bank of Kerbin. Well, we know that's what they make their fuel tanks out of. <laughs> A banking mod. And then a stock market and it's gonna get all into, like, railroad tycoon territory. Collect research early game. Minmus. Yeah, Minmus missions are the thing, for sure. Uh, let's just replot that one. One person pot into orbit. Well then first, unlock the ability to do EVAs. And make sure you do um, EVAs over each biome on Kerbin. You can uh, possibly land your uh, Kerbal at the pole. Maybe grab a goo container as well for that one. Get um, EVA report and goo at the pole. Let's just see how much it's going to take to make orbit around. Two years? Gosh. It doesn't seem like it's going to take much. About 1500, but we have it. Have it. And we need to actually get into that orbit. We will be going around the right way, so that's good. Yeah, those missions... I mean, sometimes you have to go ahead and try and get the science, even though they don't give you a contract. It depends. Okay, let's go to the tracking station. I don't know what are we... Well, let's orient this first properly to make sure it's got... This should get sunlight. But we need to make sure... I don't know whether this goes... Uh, does its mid-course adjustment first, or whether we need to bring our Kerbal home from Duna first. So. I mean, Kerbin has to be 75 degrees behind Duna for the return journey. Probably the Dresdpo probe will need my attention first. But it is sometimes a problem that you don't get contracts to do the good things that give you science. Yeah, I would not recommend doing the walking around the KSC. Practically anything will get you science quicker and easier than that frustration. Yeah, but uh, that that can be best reserved as emergency science if you need it, but uh, yeah, that's too tedious. Especially if you've already made it to orbit. It has no atmosphere, yeah, yeah. Yes, a downside to many moons, not having an atmosphere. I don't even know if... Do you unlock rover wheels that early? I don't know. Eh, we'll probably be better off just correcting that once we get there. Has science? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies at the KSC to get science from, but... When you think about it, I, I mean, it takes me longer to get to the nearest uh, Walmart than it would to get to orbit. <laughs> well, the work is even worse, yeah. Okay, that's not really the orbit we need to get into. We need to get into that one, so I should keep it loose. Okay, so this this will take him for two years, so that Duna probe's got a long way to go. Back to Space Center. Supersonic will definitely get you a ticket, yeah. They'll notice. 
I don't know how they catch up to you, but they'll notice. Kerbin, Kerbin is about to rip itself apart by earthquakes, darn it. We don't need to just drive around here all day. I, they probably did, I just haven't gotten 1.8.1. Besides, I want my backstory. My backstory says that Kerbin has earthquakes and that's why they're desperate to develop space technology to leave Kerbin. Oh great, what if this opportunity to uh, go back home actually would have taken less Delta V and therefore didn't even need the refueling mission. Okay, we've got a solution back. Well, I'll probably have to do a mid-course adjustment, but this is good. Ooh, finally we can get Rich Hat to point at the maneuver. I think this is the first time I've asked him to point directly at the maneuver. Rich Hat has probably gotten some extra ranks. So finally, finally, thanks to a little surreptitious change in our order difficulty settings. Rich Hat is returning back to Kerbin. Stupid crossfeed rules. One blueberry? Well, they did say bring a blueberries on Duna back to Kerbin, so I guess one will be enough. I'm gonna keep making it. I mean, I, I probably shouldn't be that picky, but... Considering how exceptional the Blueberry contract is... The typo is especially grating. No berry stains on his lip or teeth? It's a good point. And, and both should change their name. The funny thing is, the Sci-Fi channel decided to change its name. You know, it used to be... Sci-Fi, S-C-I-F-I, -I, and then it changed its name to S-Y-F-Y because they figured they weren't doing enough si actual science fiction. And then they started doing all sorts of science fiction, like The Expanse, Dark Matter, and all these other series. I mean, there's nothing on TV that you can't say couldn't be on YouTube, right? There's, there's even movies on YouTube and everything. Oh, this is a heck of an approach. There's a lot of blue around here. We better not hit any mountains coming in like this. Well, at least we'll have gotten our blueberries back. We've got a slate of other contracts in this install left to do. Finally, finally Rich Hat is coming back. But there are mountains. <laughs> we had the bluest of blue approaches, but now they're mountains. Nope, oh, music is somewhat on cue. Oh, we're going right past them, thank you very much. Don't know what you were trying to imply there about the mountains. Ah, I think we're going to go right past the water, unfortunately. This is no longer out in our control. Buffalo Bayou Wake and Bake. It better not be what it sounds like. <laughs> I don't know, it's getting a little bit cold around here for a cold one. Trees! Oh, Wake and Bake Steak Rub. It's made from... It's all confusing. This is a very confusing beer name you have chosen, that would root. There's a little thing there. There's a little plant. Hold on, I'm gonna have Rich Hat get out and explore that plant in particular. I don't know, it might just be... There's lots of little things around here. It might just be a random scatterer thing, probably. No, I mean, they're trolls and then... Tr there's, the, there's the situation where a person comes in and just trolls away. And then, and then there's the occasional... Occasional trollish comment from people. The tr occasional trollish comment does not make you a troll. It's the people who don't know how to do anything else that I'm more worried about. 
Well, I think these are just random scatter. Yep, we, we got some trees. We got trees, alright. Alright. I'm satisfied that there's nothing special going on here. See, earthquakes. No, I mean, we're not talking about sarcasm. Sarcasm is a different thing. I don't think it's a loosely defined, but it's a pretty darn well defined barrier between trolling and sarcasm where I come from. Trolling is specifically meant to annoy. Oh, I'm sure the EVA will work, but Rich Hat needed to get some exercise having been around Duna, stuck around Duna for a few years. I mean, maybe it works, I don't know. Okay, fine, we'll check. No, it doesn't. Okay, maybe it doesn't. Yes, you can take their helmets off, that you can do. So we got our 511 science, and most importantly, our blueberry, right? Blueberry analysis from Duna surface, 144. It says analysis. Doesn't make it clear that he actually brought the blueberries back, you know. Hmm. Hmm. He may, in fact, have eaten the blueberries. But the contract is fulfilled. We brought blueberries back. Alright, 